Welcome to White Threads Floss Tube number 48. Thank you so much for joining me today. I know that some of you are going through really difficult times at the moment with isolation and being in lockdown and things like that. And I'm really sorry for that. And I hope that you are managing okay. I hope that perhaps even this can be a bright spot in your day. I'm thinking of you. So today I was wondering what I could talk to you about and I thought well it's a while since I've shown you anything off my bookshelf. So I went and had a look and I found a book to show you. Fashioning Fashion. This is a publication put out by the Los Angeles County Museum known as LACMA in 2010 and it is still available. I did check before doing the video this morning that it is still available. It's expensive. Um, I don't know if that's because the prices are inflated now because it's been out for a while and it's highly in demand or whether it's just because it's a very thick book and it's hardcover. Um, but it is a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous book. Um, I like to look at fashion, um, particularly old vintage and you know antique fashion um, in books and in museums um, I don't actually bother looking for it in antique shops because usually the stuff that's there isn't really worthwhile but I love to look at it and this is a book that is very worthwhile if you love looking at old clothing and the beautiful tailoring that they had the cut the details and in this case also the embroidery so it's a fantastic book it's got a few um, essays in the front of the book which I don't think I've actually read I looked at the pictures um, and then it's got four chapters called timeline textiles tailoring and trim so in timeline it shows you the different silhouettes and shapes of the garments um, as they progress because it's European dress detail in detail from 1700 to 1915 so it goes through that period and then in the textiles section it talks all about the fabrics and uh, that they used so the types of fabrics the fibers whether it was silk wool that sort of thing whether they had patterns woven into them whether they were printed whether they were dyed all that sort of thing then in the tailoring section it talks about the different cuts that they used to create the garments, the shapes that they created with those um, tailoring details. And then in trim, it talks about things like the trims that were added, but also the embroidery. So I'm going to do a flick through of the book so that you can see what's in it. But I also thought it'd be really nice to show you some specific details that I particularly liked looking at. So the first one I have to show to you is this here. This is a collar on a man's jacket. Um, so it's not just women's fashion, it's men's fashion as well. And I just love the shape that that lapel has made there. Um, I think men's jackets can be fascinating. I don't know if you saw 
what was that movie that Hugh Jackman was in? Oh, The Greatest Showman. Um, when he first comes out in his red Circus Masters jacket, the thing that I noticed, I wasn't really noticing what was going on, I noticed where the shoulder seam was on his jacket. And I think I commented to my husband at the time, I think he thought he was, that I was mad. Um, but it wasn't straight across on the shoulder. It came down over the front here or this way or something. But it was really interesting and really beautiful. And I just thought, why, why not do something as interesting as that rather than having your shoulder seam here? Why not move it to somewhere much more interesting where it can create a visual effect? Um, so that's why that one caught my eye. Now the next one that caught my eye was this handkerchief here. Now you may have seen my video where I showed you the handkerchief that belonged to my great auntie Jen and it had very little fabric and was mostly lace. Um, and people said to me, it doesn't seem like it's a very useful handkerchief. Well, no, it's not. Neither's this one. And as it says in the caption for this one, it was not to be used, it was for show. Um, and that was quite common with handkerchiefs. So yeah, this one was absolutely beautiful. Um, it's made of bobbin lace and just gorgeous. The next one that I'm going to show you is completely over the top. This here is um, a tassel from a small bag called a reticule. Um, now that tassel is just absolutely incredible. It's a jumble of color and froth basically. Um, and it's interesting because those sorts of tassels, while they're not necessarily coloured, knotted tassels and really interesting tassels are still used on Italian needlework. Um, so if you ever have a look at uh, some of the more unusual books about Italian needlework, so not the ones that are really easy to find, but on styles that are a bit more obscure, they sometimes use tassels in that style of work. And they were often tied to, say, the corner of a cloth, or all the corners of a cloth and sometimes they were just as over the top as that was so I just thought that that was absolutely fascinating um, I think it's made of sorry this is really quite difficult to show you these things um, absolutely fascinating made of silk and beautiful colors and textures and pattern here we have a couple of stomachers which have metal thread embroidery on them and in here we have the detail of what that is close up. So you can see that they were really, really interested in showing some fantastic detail in this book. It's really worthwhile if you want to see things up close. This one here is a silk dressing gown, um, way down the bottom here. And then over here, we've got the detail up close. From that detail, I can see that it was not worked in a flat silk, which is what I would have assumed, but it's worked in a highly twisted silk, which is really interesting. It creates different sorts of pattern and texture than a flat silk would. This one here is a small frock for a boy. And you can see that it's worked in silk embroidery. Well, I don't know, maybe it's worked in silk embroidery. I've looked at it for a while and I think some of it looks like it's silk embroidery and some of it looks like it's soutache, which I'm probably saying wrong. It's S-O-U-T-A-C-H-E, um, which is a silk cord that's applied. And I can't decide whether it's that or whether it's embroidery, or maybe it's both. Um, it doesn't say anything about soutache if that's the way to say it, in the caption. So I'm not really sure, but it just has that sort of look to me. Um, there's also the amazing tassels as well with the, um, the swirls on the tassel heads, which are beautiful. Um, yeah, there's just so much to look in, in, at in this book. It's beautiful. So I hope that's given you some idea of why I absolutely love that book and I love looking through it and seeing all the details. The book is, again, Fashioning Fashion, European Dress in Detail, 1700 to 1915 from LACMA, which is the, let me just read this, hang on, Los Angeles County Museum of Art. Right, got that. Um, yeah, fantastic book. And if you are at all interested in fashion, details of fashion and tailoring and embroidery, then I highly recommend you pick up a copy or borrow it from your library if they've possibly got it. Mm, probably not, but you never know. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure sharing this time with you again, sharing a book that I love with you. I'll see you next time. Bye.